Hey there everybody, welcome back to the Vintage Sewing Machine Garage. You are looking at uh, a machine that I'm currently working on for a client. This is not my machine, that's why it was not included as part of the purchasing series. I am working on this machine for a client uh, and as best we can tell, it has been sitting for a very, very long time. And machines that sit for a long time often are asleep. I've described that to some of you in the past. And this particular machine uh, is part of a series of vintage Berninas that are extremely popular. They have a very devoted following of people. Uh, my client, this belonged to her mom, so this is a, a family heirloom. And so that, it, you know, has particular meaning for the owner. But this machine has, uh, as I was showing you guys, uh, in an earlier video, it has two nylon gears. Most of its uh, drivetrain and mechanical components are just very high quality steel. There may be aluminum here as well, but uh, very well made, very well engineered. But there are two nylon gears, and I've and I kind of highlighted them in the in in an earlier video on this machine. I wanted to show all of you one of the ways you can do kind of a cursory check to see if you're, uh, let's say you're gonna buy this machine and you're looking at one and someone says, hey, you know, it sews well, they know, or they don't know anything about it, which can be very common. And what you're trying to figure out is, should I buy this machine? Because if those two, one or both of those nylon gears, if they are cracked, the machine will not function properly and you'll need to replace them or have them replaced. The gears themselves are not terribly expensive, the replacements. Um, the reproduction gears. However, uh, the labor to do them is way up there, okay? Uh, I've had to do this. I did this on one of my own machines once, and it took a very long time. Most of the time involved, again, was not uh, the actual swapping out of the gear, but getting the, all the old components out because they had been in there for a long time. So I thought I would show you guys kind of how I'm gonna do a cursory check, right? Because I don't know if if, if the gears are cracked or damaged in any way, you can't tell by simply plugging the machine in and listening to it run, because sometimes these cracks are not easy to spot, okay? And this, this method I'm gonna show you, it's not foolproof, you could still have some cracks, but if the cracks are, are um, not all that well developed, you may still be able to get a stitch. So what we're gonna do today is, I've, I've done some basic oiling of the machine, and we're not gonna run it a lot, but it's okay at this point, based on what I've seen, we're gonna go ahead and, uh, where's my oiler here? I'm gonna add a couple more oiling, uh, drops of oil in here. And we'll do a more thorough oiling when we get the machine ready. But what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to assess the machine for the owner to determine if those gears are in fact cracked. Because if they are, um, I need to, we need to have a conversation to, to decide how much the owner would like to spend to overhaul the machine. And I'd like to do that before spending the hours and, and giving the client, you know, a bill for labor and then the machine turn out to need more service, more work. You can't always predict, predict these things, but when you know that the Berninas, you know, do have this as an Achilles heel, most, most machines have something about them that's, you know, quirky or, you know, there's no such thing as a perfect machine. And Berninas are lovely. They're powerful. They make a wonderful, um, all brands and models have their own signature sound and the Bernina is no different. Um, and I'll talk more about the debut video if we if we go through with the overhaul here and I'll talk about the machine and what people absolutely love about it and um, Just some of the things you want to look out for let's say you've heard about Bernina's you really want a vintage one Maybe someone in your family had one. Maybe you've got one and you want to overhaul it uh, So what we're going to do is I'm going to show you guys I'm going to take this is the bobbin case, right? Here's the bobbin case and I'm going to take the bobbin case I'm going to hold the bobbin with the thread coming over. It's going clockwise, hanging on the right. And see if I can get in here close enough. You guys see what I'm doing. You can see the thread, right? I'm going to come down, and then when I hit that slot, I'm going to double back. And then it's going to, boop, it's going to land right there. 
So now I have the bobbin case threaded. I'm going to insert the bobbin case into the machine. Make sure the little finger is lined up. Now, I have just installed a new needle. This is a size 16 universal needle. I think the brand is Class, K-L-A-S-S-E. -S -S -E. But there are a number of good brands you can, you can choose from. I happen to have one in this size and this brand. But uh, this is uh, one of the nice things about Bernina's, at least this model series, is that the needles install with the eye facing you, right? So the flat side of the needle is going to face away from you. So when I install the needle, the flat side is back here. And if you, if you ever forget, just know that you want to know that the uh, needles thread front to back. Okay, I like that because it's a little easier for me to see anyway. And if you're not sure if the needle is installed properly, if you take your thumb or finger and just lightly slide it across, you'll feel the groove, right? The groove of the needle is just on one side and it's opposite the flat side of the uh, upper part of the needle shaft. So we've installed that and now I'm going to take, this is, uh, I try to use high quality thread when I'm testing my machines. This is Mettler, one of those good brands I recommend. I'm not the only one that recommends them. And then up here, let's tilt the camera up, you guys can see me. The first thread guide is right here on the back. I'm just going to pull it through. It's Well, that's what I said I was going to do. Um, it's a fairly simple threading path. Some machines have simple paths, some have convoluted paths, but uh, if you're not sure, you can always check your manual. It will come through the second thread guide, right? There's just two up top right off the bobbin, and you can see the bobbin turning there. Now I'm going to hold with just some light tension on the thread while I come down. I'm going to move the camera for you guys so you can see this a little bit better. I want you to see one. I often get questions about how to thread machines. Most of them come from people who don't have the manuals and they're not sure how to thread them. So let's come down, and this is the, of course, the thread tension guide. We're going to come down into this slot that you see there. You guys can see. Let's move again. You'll see, you'll see the little this the, the slot right there. It's going to come right in there. Then I'm going to come up, right? And it should engage my check spring, but I got to come up to my take up arm. You guys who are new to sewing or new to vintage machines. If I tilt this up just a bit, you'll see, always make sure your take-up arm is in the upper position. Unless your manual tells you otherwise, that's where you want it when you're threading the machine. Also, make sure, I'm going to come back out a minute, notice that, uh, well you can't really see it now because the foot's not on there, I'm going to install it, but I'm going to pull up on the presser bar. Okay, You always do that because if you don't, then the presser bar, when it's down, applies tension to your tension discs. You don't want to thread a machine when the discs are, uh, the tension is on the disc. It can screw up your thread tension in your threading of the machine. So now I'm going to come up to the take up arm. And my thread wants to be, let's see, there it goes. Now you can't see the check spring in this because some designs of uh, upper tension, upper thread tension assemblies, um, sometimes the spring is out, but in this case it's recessed in here, but it is, there, it is in there. It, if you don't, uh, if you cannot um, tell it's in there, you'll find out very quickly. Let's see, okay, so the thread guides, uh, let's zoom in and you guys can see a little bit more clearly what I'm doing here, I think. And let's, I'm having to make these adjustments because of um, getting the angle right. So now that I've got my take up arm threaded, I'm going to come over here and you see this little bar. That's a thread guide. The end of it is actually tucked right over here. So you're going to come to the right and there's a little indent, indent, indentation. And now the thread is behind the little guide. There's one more guide. This is a common thing that many of us can easily miss, especially if you're new to a machine. You come down and you think, oh, here's, here's the thread. I'm just going to Hey, it looks like it's good. I'm going to go right through the eye of the needle and have it threaded. No, you're not done yet. 
There's one more thread guide. It holds the thread closer to the needle. I know this seems like we're, we're kind of splitting hairs, and we are, but those hairs are important because if you don't do, if you don't follow the threading path the way the manufacturer intended, you're, you're not going to have a happy machine, and you won't be happy either. Let's see here. Okay, so I'm going to get myself a little bit of a, take my scissors here and cut myself a, a, a fresh, freshly cut piece of threads to make it a little easier for me to thread um, thread the machine. Some people find, and I and I personally find, that without a built-in needle threader, the threading from front to back is a little easier because I can see the eye of the needle a little bit more simply. And I've been doing some oiling of the machine and a little bit of oil was on the needle. If that happens to you, you're going to want to clean that oil off. I got lucky and it threaded, but usually if if there's oil on the needle, it can interfere with your um, ability to get that needle threaded. Okay, now I'm going to show you guys. I'm going to go ahead and get the bobbin thread up, and you can see this. Those of you who are new may find this useful. Let's get our zigzag off for a moment. Okay, and notice since I since the needle threads front to back, I'm going to tug at my upper thread tail, not hard, just kind of holding it, and then also letting it drop down so that it can pull. Now you'll notice as it should be grabbing hold, and sure enough, there comes my bobbin thread. Okay, so I now have my bobbin thread pulled up. And just want to get them untangled here so that I have two, two little happy thread tails hanging in the back. Now I can close this up. So why are we doing this? If the machine has not been overhauled, why are we going to run it? Well, we're doing this because what we're trying to figure out is, are those gears cracked? This is not 100% uh, foolproof, but it's helpful. Because if I can make a series of stitches, okay, I'm going to go up and down. If I can make those stitches without an interruption, okay, that is one indication that my gears are probably okay, right? They could st they could still be off, but you know. Anyway, before we do any sewing, of course, we're going to install the foot, and this might be a good place ooh, to show you guys uh, in how to install a vintage Bernina foot. Let's get the camera a better angle here. Now, of course, Bernina's sewing machines have a new foot standard, but this is the old foot standard. They are magnificently made. Uh, presser feet and accessories for Bernina's are unique to Bernina's. They do make adapters for these so that you can put in the adapter and then use, I believe, low shank uh, universal feet. But I, and you can get those fairly easily, but these original feet are just, just glorious. They are beautifully made. Um, anyway, when I, if you look at where it connects, I'm going to change this angle because we really need a, a close up or your, everything I'm saying is going to be hard to see. Now, here's our needle. But over here, this looks like the tip of a crayon. It's kind of like a cone shaped connector. And you can see. The, the, the top of the presser foot. This is a zigzag foot. So I've got the, I'm going to pull the presser bar up and we're going to line up our foot. But before we drop it back down, notice I'm going to hold the foot in place and right over here to the side is a little, um, you can see I'm moving it back. You pull it down and that locks the foot, it keeps the foot from falling off. And um, now we should be set up and ready to do our testing. Normally, when I do test stitching, uh, I'm either trying to solve the mystery of some problem that's going on with the machine, or it's part of what I do at the very end in order to, um, you know, test to make sure everything in the machine is okay. But in this case, I have discovered that it's a, it's it's useful to do some early test stitching to help uh, inspect the gears, right? Because sometimes the, the gear may have a crack that's, that's not easy to see down in there, even with a flashlight. And you don't want to have um, paid someone or 
if it's your machine, to have spent all those hours working on this thing to discover that it has cracked gears. Again, it can be replaced, but if you have to replace the gears, it will either involve a tremendous amount of your time um, or uh, not a small amount of money for you to pay a servicer to replace them because there's a lot of labor involved. Again, the parts are the parts are super cheap, but I wouldn't say they're prohibitively expensive, but the labor can be. So we want to know, right? I want to give my client a, a good, um, firm, you know, solid estimate here. We don't want any huge surprises. Sometimes an estimate can go up and down a little bit, but it, it should it should be in the right ballpark, okay? If you're if you're doing this properly, okay. So what we need is power, and we're going to we're going to start in a long straight stitch at first. Okay guys, we've got my uh, power cord installed here and I'm just going to start again with just a straight long stitch. Nothing, nothing super quick here. And I'm getting that wonderful Bernina sound. Those of you who have Berninas, at least vintage Berninas, will recognize it. Hmm. Now, I'm not ready to completely adjust tension here. That's really not my goal. My goal is to see, as I make these stitch rounds, not even going fast, but I want to make sure that this machine is not going to have a stitch stop or be interrupted, okay? If it does, then that tells us something about our gears. So far, I'm not seeing any problems with it, but again, I always, <laughs> I always uh, approach any European-made machine with a little more humility than some of the others, just because you can have surprises. You can have surprises with any machine, but okay. Uh, let's pull our needle up for just a minute. I'm going to move over to a zigzag and and we will also, again, I still have a continuous stitch here. I haven't stopped the stitching. Just making sure I have enough room to read my stitches. I don't want to overlap them and then make it hard for me to tell if there's been any kind of interruption in the stitch. Okay, moment of truth here, folks. And I'm cautiously optimistic, but let's take a look. This is a big deal. So you can see I started, where did I say? I started here, okay? And again, we're gonna to need to make uh, some tension adjusting, but I'm not worried about that right now. Come down, okay? We made our turn, we came back, right? Made another turn and started creating our zigzag stitch. Came around, made a turn, and then came all the way back. So far, guys, I'm not seeing a stitch interruption. If I had been, then we would have been questioning whether those gears are gonna need replacing. So, fingers crossed, this is good. I'm, I'm very happy to see this. Here's the other side. And again, we can loosen the tension. We'll talk more about how to adjust tension on these uh, in, the, uh, in a different video. I, I didn't wanna really cover that today. But today was, again, if you were to see, I don't have my seam ripper with me, what will often happen with these, where is my seam ripper? I'll show you what I have seen before when this, uh, when you have a cracked gear, okay, I'm just gonna kind of kind of create what, what you will often see. Okay, so I just took out a few seams to show you. So let's say you're sewing along, follow my thumb right here, which we're moving to the right, okay? And then all of a sudden, I got a light thread on a 
on a light fabric. Sorry about that. But you see here where there's no stitch. See between my thumbs? Okay, you'll have skipped stitches. It just won't stitch. And, and then, all of a sudden, it'll sometimes either stop entirely or it'll keep going, but you'll have these gaps where you don't have a stitch, and it's because the gears have a crack and they can't, they, they're not, the machine's not functioning properly. So, there you go, guys. That's kind of a, I say an easy way. I know when you're buying a machine, you don't always have the luxury of being able to test it. But if someone's selling you a vintage Bernina, uh, they don't always want 20 bucks for them. And if someone says, hey, it's $200, it's a Bernina, before you spend your money, it, you would be very wise to take your time, okay, and try doing this on a nice day with nice weather outdoors, to, you know, for social distancing and so forth. You have to, you have to sanitize everything and be, be safe. Uh, so you don't have to do it inside. Can you run an extension cord? It's summertime, right? Most seasons of the year, except for the depth of winter, you should be able to do this, right? You can set up a little table outside and um, run an extension cord. If somebody wants to sell you, you know, a 50-year-old sewing machine for $200, they should be willing to let you test it, okay? So get the machine threaded. You'll want to put, you know, put, you're not doing your total oiling here, but put some oil in if the machine is moving, right? That's just assuming that it's moving. Even if it won't move in zigzag mode, at least test it in straight stitch, okay? But get it threaded up, put some oil in it, just to, you know enough to, to let the machine move without having to strain. And as long as your cords are solid, go ahead, make sure your bobbin is threaded and test it. And again, what are you testing for, okay? Uh, if, if it needs tension adjusting, that is not your biggest concern at this stage. You wanna make sure that those stitches, it, when it forms a stitch, it's a continuous stitch, okay? Make sure you have enough thread loaded, and it should not be interrupted. That stitch should keep on going as long as you, you know, until you're ready to stop, okay? So give it several runs up and down a piece of fabric. This one's all bunched up because we got a little, little too much, uh, a little too tight a tension there, but we can adjust that. So <clears throat> again, this is, a, this is not a perfect test, Okay, you could do this and still have a cracked gear, but the crack would likely be, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, earlier in its stage. And, and once you have a crack in a gear, you're gonna need to replace it at some point. But if the crack is bad enough to impact your sewing, it will show up normally, often. Uh, and this is a way for you to reduce your risk. Okay, and you may find when you test this, that it's, it does skip stitches, okay? There can be other causes for that. I should mention that, right? If it's skipping a stitch, it could be that it's not threaded right, there's something going on, else going on with the machine. But if it misses stitches when you're testing it and you haven't bought it yet, you need to assume that it could be a cracked nylon gear. And if it is, you need to really think, you may end up buying the machine anyway because you want it or you love, love it and you want to rescue it, but be careful uh, about doing this test because you really need to do it before you make an offer on the machine, regardless of how much they're asking for it, okay? Now, this machine was not bought by my client. They inherited it, okay? But for many of you, you'll be looking to buy one. You'll be looking to buy a Bernina, and, you know, they plug it in, and the needle goes up and down, and it looks great. But if one of those gears is cracked, you need to consider that in your... Uh, offer that you make if you decide to offer money for the machine because your cost of overhauling the machine will go up substantially, okay? And it's almost all labor, okay? Getting the old parts uh, loose and disassembled in order to replace these gears is a lot of work because those parts, you know, they were put in in the early 60s in this case, in this model, and they haven't moved since. And getting parts to move without hurting them can be done, but it is extremely labor intensive and time consuming. And I can speak from having replaced gears in these before. Um, this is why I do this test. So I can let the owner of the machine know, you know, hey, I think it's gonna need new gears. That's gonna really change. That would literally, it could easily double uh, or more than double the cost of the overhaul. I mean, it's that, it's that much of a pain. Um, now, European machines like Bernina's and Foff's, they typically take me a lot more time to overhaul 
than Japanese designs and the American singers and whites. And the reason for that is largely the way these were designed, uh, they were designed to, um, everything is hidden, um, getting to the places you need to, to get to to disassemble is more of a, a, you know, just more time, more effort, right? It's more com convoluted to get to the motor, for example, than it is on many of your vintage singers. And that's just the way it is, except for the potted motor singers, because those are also very labor intensive. But anyway, this was mainly a video to help you guys if you're interested in vintage Bernina. People love their Berninas. They're very, very loyal to, to the brand, and they are willing to pay. They bring very high prices as vintage sewing machines go. But again, uh, all vintage sewing machines can have issues, right? Everything from the most basic singer to something like this. But when it comes to the cost and the time, to overhaul and restore and bring back to working condition a machine such as this, it can be, not always, but it can be a lot more than you bargained for, okay? So this is nothing against Bernina. They are one of the most glorious machines ever made. I mean, they're just something incredibly strong about them. They have the really, one of the more narrow of the um, free arms, if you have the free arm model versions and uh, they make gorgeous stitches. So I understand why people love Berninas. I would never try to argue with them because um, they, they are right. They are magnificent machines, but like many of the European designs, they can be a lot more complex and labor intensive to restore when they have issues and problems. So just a word to the wise guys. Um, so, so far, uh, based on what I see with this, this initial stitching sample, I have hopefully cautiously optimistic news for the client that the gears are okay. It's very possible this machine was used when it was new and then it was stored for long periods. If it was stored indoors and not abused, which I don't think this one was, but if it was not exposed to extreme cold and heat, your chances of having a good gear are better because the statistics, I don't have hard data, but I believe the statistics on these machines, uh, sometimes more than half of them can have cracked gears. I don't, I don't have a, you know, a, a scientific study to back that up. This is just, you know, kind of what I've gleaned over the years and reading in forums that, you know, a lot of people will say, oh my gosh, my gear, gears are cracked. And they go to buy the gears, they get the gears, and then they find out how much it costs to replace them. If it's yours and your family, you may love it. You may not care what it costs. Hey, I want the gears replaced because I want my Bernina to work again. And I think, do I think they're worth it? Well, sure. But do you? Because it's your money, right? So there you go, guys. Just uh, again, we've talked a lot about troubleshooting in the past. We've talked about uh, issues that different machines can have. The Bernina is no different. Uh, so, for example, if I want to get this, this knob barely moves, it's very stiff. So instead of me just turning it back and forth and stressing it, I've got to get behind it, get to the steel, and I can do that. On most machines, I simply turn them over and get right under there, but not, not on this one. Oh no, no, the bottom plate has to come off and I need to get access underneath. I can do it, okay, it's not, you know, it's not terribly difficult. It's just, it's just more steps, more time involved getting access to this as well as the motor. So anyway, if this was helpful to you, please uh, feel free to like the video or uh, put some comments down below. Maybe you've had your own experience with either Bernina or some other machine that drove you crazy when you were trying to overhaul it. But, uh, but I, they are magnificent, right? There's something wonderful about them. They were, uh, they were and are you know, innovative machines. And uh, I'll say one thing, Bernina is uh, I believe it is the last family-owned company from the, all the legacy companies in the past that made sewing machines. Uh, I don't know. There's a debate as to whether any of them are still made in Switzerland or not. Um, getting answers from the company and from the dealers is, uh, is not always straightforward, <coughs> unfortunately. I'm not sure why, but it would be great to know what models that Bernita produces today that are made uh, in Thailand and which ones are made in Switzerland and they may have wonderful machines made in Thailand but uh, when you see the prices on new Berninas it may make you wonder why you can't have <laughs> Swiss labor making them but anyway guys I hope this was helpful uh, again
feel free to subscribe to the channel and if you've had your own experiences with experiences with Bernina's and the issue of gears let me know let me know what your uh, how you were able to find out if that your gears were okay or whether they needed replacing thanks for watching and stay tuned for more videos to come bye now